Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem with absolute values. In other words, a locus problem. What does locus mean? Well, locus is basically a set of points that satisfy a certain criterion or should I say criteria, whatever. So we're given a condition here. So a number Z, which is a complex number in red, such that one more than z and the absolute value of that, or maybe I should say the absolute value of one more than z is the same thing as two times the absolute value of z. So one method that would probably not work well with this problem is guess and check. There are infinitely many possibilities, so the probability of guessing it and getting it right is zero because one over infinity, right? Let's not do that. That's not efficient at all. It's actually crazy. Instead, let's do something more meaningful. Since this is a locus problem, usually locus problems are better expressed with X and Y. So I apologize, A plus B, I, the name of this channel. I'm going to have to use X plus Y, I this time. But next time, I promise, I'll try to use it. So set Z equal to X plus Y, I. And the reason behind that is we want to get a set of points which can be expressed as an equation so it's going to be a curve or maybe some a straight line or something like that. Make sense? That's why it's better to use the XY system. So what do you do next? Plug it in. If Z is X plus Y I, and now I got the X, X plus Y I plus one and then the absolute value of that. This should equal two times the absolute value of X plus Y I. Here comes the definition of absolute values. How do you find the absolute value? Well, well, Let's simplify it first. Combine the real parts, make it one thing, and then add the imaginary part, and then do the same thing here. So far, so good. Can we just distribute the two? Yes, but you don't want to do it. You know why? I don't know. Just, just don't do it. It's le better leave it outside because you're going to have to do some stuff anyways. So the next thing, since we got the absolute values, now we're going to use the definition of absolute value. What's the absolute value of a complex number? Real part squared plus imaginary part squared, and then you take the square root of the sum. In other words, if you have a complex number x plus y i that you can plot on the Argand plane, just a fancy name for the coordinate system with two coordinates, and you can go ahead and define the absolute value as the distance. This is z equals x plus y i, and this is the absolute value of z which is defined as the square root of x squared plus y squared from Pythagorean theorem. Make sense? Thanks to Greeks, we have a theorem that we can use. Now, let's go ahead and use it. This time, the real part is x plus 1. So by definition, it's going to be the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Notice that the imaginary part does not contain i. It's the coefficient of i. Get it? OK, what about the other side? Uh-oh. We need room. Houston, we have a problem. Let's go ahead and erase this. Hopefully you got that one. And again, if you are new to complex numbers or you need a refresher, go ahead and check out my lecture videos and let us know what you think in the comment section down below. So here we have a two, so we'll keep it outside. And then the absolute value of x plus y i is the square root of x squared plus y squared because you're adding the sum of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part and then square rooting the answer. Make sense? That's the absolute. It's kind of mouthful, but easy to write me mathematically. Imagine there was a time when we didn't have any mathematical symbols, not even the equal symbol, not even multiplication, nothing. Everything had to be written in words. And even an equation like this, maybe even simpler linear equations, could only be expressed like with pages. Can you imagine how inefficient that would be? But people went through that. And so we're low. We're so lucky and fortunate that we don't have to deal with those things. But a lot of times we take things for granted and we don't appreciate it. Anyways, I don't know why I said that. I just wanted to share with you real quick my feelings. Now, the next part is very interesting because we have radicals. So what should we do? Square both sides. And that's actually going to do the trick. Obviously, you want to get rid of the radicals, right? You don't want to leave it like that because what kind of equation is this? Like square root of something equals two times square root of something else? I have no idea. Is it a radical equation? 
who knows we need to simplify it so let's go ahead and simplify this we're gonna get x plus one squared plus y squared equals now when you square the two you're gonna get a four and that'll be multiplied by x squared plus y squared awesome what do we do next expand 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 and distribute and simplify okay you get the idea x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared equals 4x squared plus 4y squared so far so good not really we still have to do more work so we're not happy yet okay what do we do next bring these over by subtraction and bring this over and bring this over you can bring everything over maybe leave the constant here forget about it just bring everything else. 4x squared minus x squared is going to be 3x squared. 4y squared minus y squared is going to be 4y squared. I mean, 3y squared, they're supposed to be equal, by the way. If the coefficients of x squared and y squared are not equal, then we have a problem. Actually, not a problem, but something else. But let's not talk about it until we get our own shape. Okay? 3x squared plus 3y squared. And now what, what else was I going to bring? Yes, the minus 2x, and then leave the 1 here. Now, there's a good reason why we leave it there. You'll see in a little bit what we do. But first, let's divide everything by 3. I don't want 3x squared. I want x squared. Okay? Very specific. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and just divide by 3. Don't forget to divide anything by 3. Otherwise, you'll be messed up. Okay? Your answer will be wrong, wrong, wrong. So, what do you do next? complete the square how do you complete the square well i have x squared minus 2 over 3x what's the coefficient of x two thirds what's half of two thirds one third what is one third times one third one ninth hmm. you see the trick hocus pocus abracadabra that's basically what you need to add to make it a perfect square and that's one ninth and of course y squared is going to stay because we don't have y terms make sense now what is going on on either side Let's go ahead and write this as the square of a binomial, if you know what that means. It's going to be x minus 1 over 3 squared plus y squared. And here, this is 3 over 9 plus 1 over 9 is 4 over 9. Beautiful. 4 over 9 is a perfect square. I can square root it, but why would you do that, right? Well, well, this is the famous, or should I say infamous, equation of a circle. And what does that look like in general form? x plus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Center at h comma k. Don't forget this. This is super important. And radius is r. Therefore, from here, we get a circle with center one third comma zero. Notice that k is zero. And radius two thirds. For the radius, you need to square root this number. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at something. And then we'll finish up with that. And what is that thing? Ta-da! It's Desmos. Great. So if you graph this equation, that's what you get before you simplify. That's the radical. And guess what? You have a circle. Yay! And that is the center. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.